In this set of videos, we are going to talk about work, energy, and power, which is a continuation of our lesson on Newton's laws of motions. So our learning objectives for this lesson is to be able to apply the work energy theorem to obtain quantitative and qualitative conclusions of a given system, relate power to work, energy, force, and velocity, relate gravitational, elastic, potential energy of a system and its transformation to kinetic energy, and build up a strong analysis and better understanding of complex applications of work, energy, power, and energy conservation with the use of calculus. So, in our previous discussion, we discussed about the motion of an object in terms of Newton's laws of motion. So, in the discussion, in the Newton's laws of motion, we used force as the quantity to determine motion, diba? Dynamics. So, when force is exerted, it causes motion. Okay? It caused motion. Now, in this lesson, we are going to use energy. To analyze the motion of objects. So it's still related to motion. Okay. Now, energy remains constant. Diba? Energy is conserved. So this concept of energy will provide us another way of solving practical problems. So if we can explain why motion um, there is motion of an object by force. If there is force exerted, then we can also explain that through the concept of energy. So the concept of energy will provide us another way of solving practical problems. And it will also enable us to have a deeper understanding of natural phenomena. So things that are hap happening around us. But these two concepts, the concept of force... And the concept of energy are different, very different approaches, no? Relating to the laws of motion, but they are linked together through the concept of work. So, work links force and energy. So, we have concepts already of what work is. We have concepts of ener about energy. So when you say work, like for example, um, after you go to school, you work, stuff like that. But that concept is different from the concept of work in physics. So at the end of this lesson, we'll be able to define what, really, what work really is and what is energy and how they are related. So a simple definition of work is that work is a measure of the change a force produces. The measure of the change a force produces. So in this definition, this, this relates work to force. So as we all know, force produces changes. It can set things in motion. Okay? It can set things in motion. It can change the paths of objects. We were able to study that already. Um, it can bring objects to a stop, like this person um, stopping a ball no, from, from the goal. It can push things together. Force pushes things together, but force can also pull things apart. So there are many things um, force can do. So force, again, is a measure of the change a force produces. So we can say... That the physical quantity called work is a measure of the amount of change to which a force gives rise when it acts on something. Okay? Now, what is this change that we are talking about? The measure of the amount of change to which a force gives rise when it acts on something. Okay, so for example, these men are exerting forces okay so the first person is pushing a wall and the second person is throwing a ball 
So let's say that the forces that they are exerting are equal. So this man exerts a certain amount of force ag against the wall. So let's say that this is the force exerted by the man. That's force F. Okay. But no matter how hard the man will push against the wall, say for example, just imagine the wall of a building. Okay. So no matter how hard the man will push the wall, nothing will ever happen to the wall. But if this person, this other person is going to exert the same amount of force towards the ball, the ball will fly. Okay? So it means that not all forces, you know, will give rise or will cause a change to an object so there will only be work there will only be work if there is a change you know okay amount of change to which a force gives rise when it acts on something there must be a change okay so that is work so what is this Specifically, what is this change that we are talking about? So, technically, the definition of work is that the work done by a constant force, F, acting on an object while it undergoes a displacement, X, is equal to the magnitude of the force component, F of X, meaning along the, along the direction of X, the displacement, X, in the direction of the displacement, X, multiplied by the magnitude x of the displacement so we can understand the definition better by looking at this um, two figures so in the first figure this is the force exerted so supposing this block of wood is pulled by exerting a force f at an angle theta with the horizontal so what is the force? So, by definition, I mean, what is the work exerted? Ang work na na-exert is dapat, sabi ni saya pa, ang work done by the object is the force exerted parallel to the displacement. So, if the displacement, after pulling this block of wood, and this is the final position of the block of wood, then the displacement is delta x, then the the force that caused this change delta x is only the component of the force that is parallel to that displacement and what is that component of f it's f of x diba? this is f of x so work therefore work is equal to f of x cosine theta times delta x. So, this is the force component parallel to the displacement and delta x is the displacement. Diba? We usually just memorize work equals force times distance. Okay, so that I this is the premise for that force times distance. So, or f of x, or simply f. So, f cosine theta. Okay, let's just write that again. Work is equal to f of x, which is the component parallel to um, the displacement, times the displacement delta x. But then, f of x is equal to f cosine of theta, and then that's times delta x so if if the force is just parallel na, to the um, to the displacement then automatic na f delta x why still makaingon ta work is equal to f cosine theta times delta x but then what is theta here if the 
if the force is just you know horizontal parallel to the displacement delta x what is theta there it's zero degrees so f cosine of zero degrees times delta x but what is cosine of zero cosine zero is just equal to one so therefore w is equal to f times the displacement delta x so again work is just equal to the force parallel to the displacement delta x now what will happen if the force is perpendicular so kaning first na figure it's just at a set the force is exerted at a certain angle theta now what will happen if the force exerted is perpendicular to the displacement so an example of that would be you know if you're carrying something so in the figure here we have a pail but whatever object you carry you know, even if you carry it and then you transfer you know, to another position like you walk a certain um, distance towards the right but then the force exerted here is the force ca in carrying the object so in this case the pail so the force exerted by you on the pail is exerted upward so that's 90 degrees right but the displacement would be horizontal so what is the angle between them it's 90 degrees so from the definition work equals f cosine theta times delta x then what what is the angle there if they're perp perpendicular to each other the angle is 90 degrees so f cosine of 90 degrees times delta x but what is 90 degrees equal to that's what's cosine 90 degrees that is just equal to zero so if um if work i mean if force is perpendicular to the displacement then automatically work is equal to zero so there is such that if the force exerted is perpendicular to the displacement of an object then no work is done on the object okay so for the unit of work the si unit of work is the joule abbreviated using the symbol j so one joule is the work done by a force of one newton acting through a distance of one meter so diba because work is equal to force parallel to the displacement times the displacement so force the unit of force is newton and the unit of um, displacement is meters for the si so one joule is equal to one newton meter but then what is one um, newton equal to so that's one kilogram meters per second squared times meters so therefore one joule is equal to one kilogram meter squared per second squared okay so the joule is named after the english scientist james joule and it's pronounced as j joule and not as joule so we will be solving uh, sample problems in the next video